In this section, we will move our players into more and more competitive situations to ready them for match play. Let's start out with a practice exercise guaranteed to establish control and consistency, as well as disarm the multitude of overhitters which populate the recreational ranks. The rules are simple. Points start with a serve as in normal tennis. However, in this drill, if a player hits a winner or even forces an error, they lose the point. If there is a doubt, the player who misses the shot makes the decision whether it was a forced or unforced error. This results in a series of very long and patient points like the one we see here. This second exercise focuses primarily on the return of serve and works well for both singles and doubles. Instead of the server having two chances and the receiver only one, this training drill takes the pressure off of the receiver and puts it on the server. The purpose is to force consistent second serves, plus encourage the receiver to go for bigger and bigger shots against these slower spin serves. The rules are simple. The receiver is allowed to miss their first return and still get a second chance. However, if the server misses either of the serves, the server loses the point. Regular match scoring can be used. This next match play exercise is a real favorite and incredibly simple yet very effective. It works well for both singles and doubles and creates total awareness on the importance of winning game points. Let's say that our two players here are playing a match and the score is 40-15. If the server wins the point, it would be game. However, if they lose that point, their score now goes back to love and the new score is love 30. In this case, they would again serve to the deuce court. Another example would be if the server has a break point at 30-40. Now, if they don't convert that opportunity, the score changes to 40 love for the server. This is a great rule adjustment not only for practices, but also for social tournaments. This next variation can really add a lot of fun to any practice session. The only requirement is to bring one different colored ball to the court, in addition to the standard yellow ones. It creates a sort of wild card environment that makes every game more interesting. On any first or second serve during a game, the server can pull out of their pocket that different colored ball, and that ball is immediately worth three points. With this rule in place, you'll be amazed to see how much the receiver's focus increases. A rule variation to keep in mind for better players with booming first serves is to only allow it on second serves or to tilt the balance in favor of the receiver, make it mandatory for the server to use that ball once per game on any serve, but only make it a three-point possibility for the receiver. Statistical analysis of tennis matches started off years ago with the coach sitting at courtside, taking notes with pad and pencil in hand. Then the computer age arrived, and the whole process has become so complicated that the pad and pencil technique has by and large been forgotten, although everyone will admit that statistical analysis can indeed be a very helpful tool. Here we see charting in its most simple possible form with no need for coach nor computer. I like to call it simplicity charting. Players choose one or two issues, like double faults and ground strokes hit into the net, for example. Every time one of these errors occur, they take a ball and put it into the back fence. Then, at the end of their practice set, they simply compare their specific mistakes based on the grouping of balls stuck into the fence. All that's needed are extra balls and a fence for a very thorough analysis of one or two aspects of focus. In this perspective changing drill, players are encouraged to hit the ball with both more depth and more angles. 
The goal is for the ball to land in the court and then hit either the back or side fence before landing twice on the court surface. When players feel they have successfully hit the ball so this will occur, they firmly call out, leave it. The player on the other side must then let the ball go. If it hits the back or side fence, the player who hit the shot wins the point immediately. On the other hand, if it bounces in the court a second time without hitting either fence, they would also lose the point immediately. What a great way to increase a player's awareness of how much pressure they are actually placing on their opponent. This next exercise game has been a personal favorite of mine for years. The rule adjustment in this one is to have both members of the serving team serve at the same time. After that, anything goes. However, they only get one serve each. Therefore, if they both miss their serves, it is counted as a double fault. The only other reminder is that the receivers must not return out balls. Points are determined by which team wins the last ball in play, and, as far as safety is concerned, we recommend that the servers do not serve in volley unless the receivers are required to hit the first ball back cross-court. The final exercise of this section is designed to simulate match play in a cooperative environment whereby both sides are working together for an initial ball control sequence to begin each point. Here we see the players in a serve and volley sequence, whereby the point does not begin until five specific shots in sequence are executed. The serve, the return, the first volley, the receiver's second shot, and then the server's second volley. On this fifth shot, the server is allowed to try and win the point. Therefore, the smart receiver will hit their second shot low to the incoming server's feet to try to neutralize the point. <laughs> 